Hello and welcome. In today's video, I will explain the basics of a system called the smart money concept. We will cover what an order block is and what a breaker block is. We will focus on more complex and intricate techniques in the second part of the smart money concept mini series. So don't forget to subscribe. This video will be supplemented with lots of examples and charts so that you understand the method really well by the end. There are many subtle differences between the versions of the SMC method circulating on the internet today. We are bringing you the method used by the ATAS expert, which is more detailed. Although SMC has gained a lot of popularity on the internet in recent years, it is not a new method by any means. The first person to describe the SMC concept was Richard Wyckoff over 100 years ago. It is not a classic trading strategy in the true sense of the word, but rather an overall way of looking at the market that can help you significantly improve your trading results and consistently find entry points. It is a set of simple methods for which you just need an ordinary chart. So, despite the capabilities of the Atas platform and its sophisticated volumetric analytic tools, I will be using candlesticks only. And because I show you how to find the important spots very precisely, you'll be plotting them the same way every time from now on. You identify the proper candle and you will be able to trade it successfully. And that's the first step on the road to consistency in trading. So look at this chart. The first thing we have to do is to identify swing highs and swing lows. Swing lows are the bottoms of the candle, which created the lowest price during the price movement. This is swing high, this is swing low, this is swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, low and so on and so on. Now, the crucial thing is to draw a rectangle at the proper candle. For example, this one, when I focus on this swing low, I'm looking for the candle which represents the most important thing in the smart money concept. I will use the rectangle and draw it at this candle. For the sake of this video, I'm going to increase the value of the magnet sensitivity so that the points will be stuck to the bottom and top of the candle and I will also change the settings for the rectangle I will check here extend lines right and I will save these settings as defaults and now look at this look at the reaction here This is a correct reaction to the smart money concept. Look how nice trend you might be following if you were trading the smart money concept. The smart money concept in trading refers to the idea that certain market participants, often considered to be more informed or sophisticated, are able to identify opportunities and make trades that are more likely to be profitable. These participants are typically institutional investors, which means large organizations investing substantial amounts of funds. These are the banks, hedge and pension funds, or knowledgeable individuals with access to considerable resources and information. When you start with the SMC, the first thing you will come across is the term order block. It is the last candle of the original direction, which is this one, before moving in the opposite direction, which is obviously this one. This candle either creates the swing high or swing low, which is this one in this case, or it is the last candle of the original direction, which precedes the candle with swing low or swing high. Now let's move on a chart a little and search for another swing high and swing low so that you are familiar with this. Obviously, this is swing low, this is swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high. 
Now we will be looking for the last candle of the original trend before the reversal. So I will zoom in here. And as you can see, the last positive candle is this one. So let's draw a rectangle and show if there was any reaction. I'm plotting it at the highest point of the candle and the lowest point of the candle. And as you can see, there was a reaction and movement down. Now let's draw another rectangle here and check if it works. I'm using this high and this low because the green candle, this one, was the last one of the original trend direction. Now let's scroll the chart to the right. And as you can see, there were some reactions and possibility to short here. If you had troubles with identifying swing highs and swing lows, you could use either the ATAS indicator called fractals and set it like this. Now you see the local extremes based on the five candle patterns. Another option is an indicator called zigzag, which is more complex and more capable. Imagine the opposite situation, a downtrend represented by red candles. This is a swing low because it is the lowest point of this movement. We are going to look here in this section at the last candle that preceded the candle creating the lowest low. So obviously it's this one. We are interested in this red candle. I'm again using the rectangle and plotting it between the highest point of the candle and the lowest point of the candle. And again, if we move to the right, we will see whether this order block was successful and if there was any reaction. It is apparent that it was absolutely perfect one. Imagine you stepped here in. Look at the movement followed by the reaction to the order block. A downtrend is represented by red candles, which are these. At this candle, the so-called stupid retail was jumping into shorts. They hoped for downtrend continuation. However, smart money traders were starting to get rid of their short positions. They were closing them and instead starting to accumulate a position in the opposite direction. That's why there's the rotation, the overlapping candles. Even though it obviously matters what time frame you use for identifying the order blocks, let's switch this chart to 30 minutes time frame. This rotation was an interesting area because it has created this negative but green candle. The last one before the reversal. Accumulated positions must be disposed of by traders in distribution after a move. This was a trend move and there was some kind of distribution of those accumulated positions. This is a common mechanism of the market. Accumulation, trend, distribution. This is what market movements are all about. After the accumulation, just before the trend, there is often a manipulation. That is, the last liquidity withdrawal, the scooping up of positions at the best price, and the last trick for the retail traders. Some of them will open the opposite direction and just provide liquidity for the smart money. Plenty of contracts that institutional traders will be happy to jump on. The last negative candle and I stress negative because it is not necessarily a red one, is the order block, which we will plot over its high and low and look for the reaction next time. So I'm going to draw a rectangle again, use the high of the order block candle and the low. And again, as you can see, there was an immediate reaction when returning to this area. The price returned, entered the area again, and then continue it upwards. It is very important to understand why we plot the so-called last positive candle in an uptrend and last negative candle in a downtrend. This candle has formed a swing low and is red. However, it is not an order block because it is positive candle, which means it closed above 50% of its height. Now let's talk about the positive and negative candles. Look at this drawing. 
These candles are positive. But if I show you even these candles, but these are positive too. How it comes, they are red. You have to pay attention where did the candle close. So you will observe the high of the candle, the low of the candle, and estimate where 50% of the height is. And if you draw a line here at 50%, you will see that each of these candles closed above 50% of its height. This candle closed here, this candle closed here, this candle closed here. However, even this red one closed above its 50% of the height. The same this one, and even this one, it closed here. Now let's see how the situation look at the opposite side. These are negative candles, but again, not because of its color, but because of its closing. These green candles closed below the 50% of its height. Check this out. I'm going to draw a line here in the middle of the candles. And as you can see, every close is below the 50% of the height of the candle. The first candle closed here, the second one here, the third one here, the fourth one, even though it's a green candle, closed below the 50% of its height. The same here and the same here. This candle has a red body. At first glance, it has closed above half its height and it is therefore a positive candle. The order block is therefore this candle. It is the last negative candle before this move up. An order block only becomes an order block after the price moves away from it so that there is at least one entire candle above or below it, including both wicks. Do you remember the chart we began today with? On the euro dollar chart, let's look at this area. A swing high has formed here, and this was the last positive candle. So I will draw a rectangle here and zoom a little bit in. Notice how this entire candle, including its wicks, got below the rectangle. That's why the rectangle became an order block. And you can notice that price came back here and it didn't make a new high anymore, but instead make a significant move down and make a new low. The order block is the most important building block of the SMC and therefore it is essential to understand exactly how to find and plot it the same way every time. So let's see a few charts to get used to the mechanism of drawing order block and rectangles. For example, here we have a Nasdaq chart. I'm identifying this swing low. In this case, this candle is the order block here and I'm drawing the rectangle. These were the candles above the order block rectangle, which means after revisiting the area, these became valid levels where you could have entered long position. The same thing here. This is a swing high, this is a swing low. Therefore, this is a last candle of the movement down. So I'm drawing a rectangle here and certainly with these candles above the rectangle, revisiting the area here with the opportunity for going long and profiting from this movement. And how is the order block traded? Once it is plotted, it is expected to act as support or resistance during the next visit. This means that when the price returns to the order block from above, we expect it to hold and the price to bounce back up from it into the uptrend. Conversely, if the price approaches the order block from below, we expect it to fail to push through it and the price to bounce off of it to the downtrend. It's a good idea to wait for any kind of confirmation. You can use delta indicator and gauge cluster chart, but even with a simple chart, you can wait for some reversal patterns. Such as here, you would have entered at these first candles, which revisited the order block area. You would have entered the position here, placing the stop loss, let's say, above the 
order block and as you can see the risk reward ratio was at least 2 to 1. Now why do order blocks work at all? I will draw a few order blocks here. I'm looking for the last positive candle in this movement up. It's this candle. So I'm using its high and its low and there are some downtrend, some uptrend, some reaction to it and then movement down. Same here. This is a swing low, so I'm looking for the last candle in the original direction prior to the candle with the lowest low. It is this one, certainly. So I'm drawing the rectangle again here, and there was a very nice reaction. Downtrend to the other block zone. This is the zone. Revisiting the area, revisiting again. However, there was a very nice uptrend from this position. Suppose retail was jumping in via market orders into long positions here. While smart money was already planning a reversal and opening short positions. This means that one party was caught in a bad long position. They are trapped in it. Therefore, we call them trapped traders. They expected the trend to continue up, but there was a quick change and the trend turned down. So I'm drawing a rectangle at this order block. Once the price returns to roughly the level where one party wrongly entered the position, they start to unload their losing positions with a small loss. In order for someone to close a long position, they have to sell. Similarly, other market participants will start to open a short position here as well. They saw that the retail sellers were trapped here and the market was dominated by sellers who turned the price to downtrend. They don't want to miss the expected continuation of the trend downwards. And at the same time, at these points, the aggressive sellers who have succeeded in outbidding the buyers and dominating the market start adding to their short positions to prevent the buyers from dominating the market and simply want to take another right. So this is another chart and let's adapt the smart money concept here. This is a swing low and we are looking for the last candle of the original direction. It is certainly this one. It is closed below the 50% of its height. Let's move to the right and see what happened here. Now this was a perfect reaction, wasn't it? You see the distance between the order block created and the reaction to it. But despite it, pay attention to the reaction, to the massive reaction when the price revisited the area. Now let's spend some time with breaker blocks. The breaker block is no different from the order block in identifying and plotting zones. What is different is the way it is traded. You may know from the simple price action what a flip is. If the price smashes through the level as if it wasn't there at all, it reacts to the level even stronger when it revisits the zone. With order blocks, we said that they act as support and resistance. The equivalent of a breaker block is the so-called flip. Breaker block is basically order block that didn't work out. It failed. This is the very first chart we started with today and I will draw this order block which created this swing high. There was some attempt to react to the order block from below, however it failed. Price went through the order block, there are entire candles above the area again and when the price returns back to this area it serves as support from here not a resistance from here. When an order block fails to keep the price in check, it breaks through, suggesting the smart money direction might be changing. Once the price breaks above or below the order block, it can act as a barrier for prices in the future, just like how support can turn into resistance and vice versa. For example here, there was a swing low at this level and this is the order block defining it. 
So I'm drawing a rectangle as usually. And as you can see, there was no reaction to the level. You could have expected that the price goes up, but it didn't. Instead, it fell through and returned to the level from below. So instead of longing here, you should have opened a short position here and went short. Breaker blocks are spots where market makers intentionally break through support or resistance levels. On the chart, they show up as levels where the price breaks above or below a certain point. According to the SMC theory, most smart money orders are made at these levels. Well, we've learned what the order block and breaker block is and how to identify them at the chart. However, that's not the whole concept of the SMC. In the next video, we will break down market structure, fair value gap, liquidity, initial balance and sessions. In the meantime, try practicing highlighting swing highs and lows with the fractals indicator, zigzag, or simply by your hand. Don't forget to pull the bell on to see the next part of the SMC mini-series. Have a great day.